It's late November. The rising wind. Everything just waiting for the monsoon. Downriver in Bangkok Harbor stands a freighter. Getting ready to ship a cargo. You can't load at any port. That cargo is a man. A man with a lot of past. And right now, very little future. Let me introduce myself. Worthington's my name. Or Stanton, or Green. Take your pick. I've used them all. Twenty years in exile here. It's a long time. You can't help it. The memories come crowding in. Fragments half remembered. Long lost things. Broken dreams. They take me back. Back into a past I tried so hard to bury. Back to a time when I was Captain Harold Stanton, son of General Angus Stanton, the Lion of Dunkirk. I was 20 years old when war broke out. Nothing I'd ever learnt on the playing fields of Eton could have prepared me for what I found. Three years as a prisoner of the Japanese. But I can't tell you what happened in that camp, not yet. It's enough to say that honour and courage were in short supply. But that was the war, or part of it anyway. My father led his men to glory. I found fear and disgrace. When it was over, I went home to England, to a court-martial. The court finds you, Captain Harold Stanton, guilty, and sentences you to be cashiered. March out, the accused. There was nothing left in England, not for me anyway. Couldn't wait to leave the place. I suppose you'd call it running away. Running away. Except, of course, you take yourself with you, don't you? Like a shadow. Only the scenery changes. Egypt first, then Rhodesia, Aden for a while. Suddenly I found myself middle-aged in Australia, working for some big, anonymous law firm. It suited me fine. It was one of those places where you charge like a lawyer and work like a clerk. Another country, another identity. I just read Our Man in Havana as a name. Graham Greene seemed common enough. Graham, can I see you a minute? I've got a few clients I'd like to do. Well, they're grazers from Brokenhorn. I didn't realize, of course, but the people I was about to meet were going to change things forever. Graham, I'd like you to meet Sir Richard and Lady Faulkner and their daughter, Miss Catherine Faulkner. Mr. Graham Green. Ah, Graham Green, of course, not anyone else's. It was a joke he told whenever he got the chance. Yeah, he didn't Green. find it half as funny as I did. No trouble, not with a title search. He read Law at Cambridge. You must excuse me. Well, now, Sir Richard, how can I help? We own a property, a very large property. You may have heard of it, Guardbridge. Guardbridge? Oh, yes. Anyway, in recent times, we've managed to acquire four of the adjoining properties. There is, however, a fifth property. Are you following me, Mr. Green? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. For many years, we've been under the impression that it was owned by a consortium. Now we have reason to believe that there may have been some change. So what we'd like you to do is make a thorough investigation and find out exactly what the situation is so that we can make them an offer. I see, yes. Tell you why. Fools give you reasons. Wise men. 
Spade. Two hearts. Pass. Three hearts. Pass. Four hearts. Pass. 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 Oh, Father, you're the dummy again. Father normally has to play the dummy. Hard to find a good dummy. We're lucky, Richard's very good at it. I can see that. Oh dear. <laughs> My father always had the lights dust at ten. When we put the power on, we saw no reason to change. You probably find our ways a little strange. Oh, not at all. But that's one of the things I can't abide about the world today. Change for the sake of change. Anything of value just thrown away. Mother. Be quiet, Catherine. You've asked Mr. Green here to meet us. There's no point in wasting his time. We're very lucky, though. We have Guardbridge. In a way, it's a world unto itself. An older world, Mr. Green. A better world. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night. Good night, huh, Catherine. I'll show Mr. Green to his room. It's all right, Mrs. Cameron. I can do it. Show you something. We've only got a minute. The lights go out at quarter past. All right. <sighs> Open it. <laughs> That's cheating. It's not Christmas. Go on, quickly. No, no, I'll open it tomorrow. I'm warning you. Don't open it in public. <laughs> You're just teasing. All right. If you say so.
did. It was really very... Uh... Well, when did this come? Yesterday. out of my little jokes. Sorry I lied to you. The law degree from Cambridge? That was a lie too, I suppose. Well, the piece of paper I presented to you in Graham Greene's name, yes, that was a lie, but um, not my qualifications. I am, in fact, a lawyer. All well, the more reason why I can't condone it. It didn't mean any harm. I wasn't trying to defraud anyone. I'm just sick of it, that's all. Understand? I didn't expect any sympathy from England, but... You know, my, my own father never, ever forgave me. Not him. So it says. Well, uh, come back tonight, if you don't mind. I'll pack the rest of it up tonight. Or privately. Well, thank you. You seem to me to be a very decent man. Bridge. Can I speak to Miss Faulkner, please? Who shall I say is calling? Graham Green. Good morning, sir. Hold the line, I'll put you through. A phone call, madam, Mr. McNair. Hello. Darling, it's me. This is Catherine's mother, Mr. Stanton. Lady Faulkner. I'm very sorry to read about your father. Sorry and surprised. Well, uh, obviously, I must explain. That's why I'm calling. Uh, I'm Catherine. afraid not. She's asked me to request that you don't call again. Well, I just want the opportunity, surely. Mr. Stanton. Catherine has packed up all your gifts. She'll return them by tomorrow's post. But that won't be necessary. Let, let me talk to her, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Stanton. She's made it quite clear. She says she's been deceived. She doesn't wish to speak to you again. Not today, not ever. Lady Faulkner, I need your help. Goodbye, Mr. Stanton. Apologize. He was very embarrassed about employing him. He said he had no idea. So what's happened? The man's gone, of course. Gone? Where? Why should we care? He's gone. That's all that matters. I do, Mother. I care. For heaven's sake, Catherine. The man's a fraud. He's probably on a plane already. No. I think he would have called. Not if he had any shame, he wouldn't. Read it again if you don't believe me. He sacrificed his own men. He was court-martialed. No wonder he had to lie about his name. He knows what else he has to hide. Read it! Oh, yes. 
Yes, I know. He had the manners and he had the accent. But that was window dressing, wasn't it? Say what you like. I know he cared about me. Cared about you? Just ask yourself this, Catherine. Why should a man like that care about you? <laughs> Do you call a few flowers and a couple of presents caring? <laughs> I don't. I'd call it an investment, and this would have been the dividend. Guardbridge. It wasn't like that. Of course it wasn't. <laughs> don't you see? That's the very heart of the deception. The girl should never suspect, not even for a moment. Of course, I must take part of the blame, but I did try to warn you. Oh, yes. Yes, you warned me. Every time anyone showed the slightest interest in me, you warned me. All I've ever done is try to protect you. <laughs> if you had listened to me, you wouldn't have made such a fool of yourself. People are laughing at you, Catherine. All our friends, they're laughing at you. There's only one thing to do, isn't there? We'll put it behind us, won't we? Say it, Catherine, won't we? I want you to put together everything he ever gave you. I want the flowers you pressed, the cards he sent you, the Christmas present, that sketch, Everything. Understand? <laughs> and Catherine, I won't mention this again, but I also want the other gift. Don't look at me like that, child. The gift Mrs. Cameron saw him give you. The secret. Good morning, Mr. Stanton. I'm afraid Miss Faulkner is not at home. Please come in. Catherine! Catherine! Miss Faulkner asked me to send you this. As you hear, it will save me the postage. Where is she? I'm sorry, Mr. Stanton. I must ask you to leave. Now.
I was hoping you could help me. Certainly. I need to contact Mr. Green, M Mr. Uh, St Stanton, whatever. I, I thought you might have an address, somewhere to send his mail, perhaps? Well, uh, just hold on a minute. Thank you. My pleasure. It's ironic, isn't it, Doctor? I was brought here to forget. Now you tell me that I'm going to be reminded of it for the rest of my life. What about the father? Could you marry him? Possibly. If I could find him. We were very happy. <sighs> he walked out on me, Doctor. I haven't heard a word. He might as well be dead. Come to that. So might I. I'm worried about her. She's very depressed. Is that surprising? I should have thought it was a natural consequence of shame. What I'm saying is, if no one wants this child, I could arrange for it to be dealt with. She's offended against God once. I won't have it done twice. Do you think that's fair? Of course I do. Let her have the child. And every day it can stand as a testament to her foolishness. Daddy. Make your pardon, child. Is my ask a question? That's better. Where's my daddy? I'm not really sure. Perhaps you'd better ask your mother. Your father's dead, Katrina. He died before you were born. Is he coming back? I shouldn't think so. No, he isn't. Who put this into your head? What was he called? Graham. Hell, I think. It was Graham. Grandma's just making a joke. Yes, I'm just making a joke. It's not a very funny joke. Mother has asked for you. She's in the sitting room. I'd like to introduce my daughter, Katrina. This is Mr. McNair. Katrina. Hello. Sit down, dear. Perhaps Mr. McNair would like some more tea. Oh, yes. Thank you. What have you been doing up there? Working. What sort of work do you do? 
I built things. 20 years old, and what do you think she builds? I built dolls' houses. Look at Mr. McNair when you speak to him. Not just houses, though. They're mansions, complete with little people. Mother and father, brothers and sisters. A proper family. I'd like to see one. No, Mother's right. It, it's silly. It's just a hobby. Well, not everyone thinks so. Queen Mary collected them. Beautiful things. There's one on display at Windsor Castle, I believe. Historians say it's the priceless record of the period. Now, who would have thought that? A doll's house. Still, that's often the way, isn't it? The most underrated things turn out to be the most valuable. Uh, I don't know what historians would make of these. There's even one of Guardbridge. Except it doesn't have any windows. What sort of house doesn't have windows? Oh, no. You like reading? Answer, Mr. McNair. Yes. What sort of thing? Oh, different things. History, novels. Tell Mr. McNair what you like most. Romances, Mr. McNair. My, my mother means romances. Uh, Mills and Boone, that sort of thing. I'm sorry. If you'll excuse me. She suffers from asthma. I'm afraid few people realize how debilitating it can be, not just physically. You must forgive her. It's very difficult for her. They've come round to thinking that asthma's a nervous thing. Is that what they've told you? I don't have much faith in doctors. I never have. She was always sickly, even as a child. That's why I kept her here. This has been her school, her home, her whole world. She knows almost nothing of life outside of here. Don't underestimate her. I think you'd be surprised how fast she could adapt. Oh, God willing, she won't have to. There's no reason for her to ever leave Guardbridge. We're still a wealthy family. Yeah, but is, uh, is that the life you want for her? Of course. It's a better life, a safer one. In the end, a much happier one. I'm sorry, I can't agree. You don't have to. I'm her mother. Her welfare is my concern. Yeah, and I'm just a lawyer. No. Uh, oh, no, of course not, Mr. McNair. You're the family lawyer. That's why I've asked you here. I need to appoint a guardian, a trustee, someone to administer her affairs. Surely you do that. Yes. But I'm talking about the future. There's no harm in planning. That's the advice we lawyers always give. I also need to make a will. I'm sorry, is it... Uh... Cancer, yes. Does she know? No, no. Nor should she, not yet. You're going to have to tell her. I know. But, uh, as you probably realize, my daughter and I, we don't share an easy confidence. No. Oh, there's one other thing. I've always done my best to protect her. She believes that her father, my husband, to her, she believes that he died. I don't see any reason to disillusion her. Of course. Mr. McNair would like to change for dinner. Show him to his room, please. No, I'll, I'll stay. Sir Richard Faulkner's, Alice Faulkner, grandmothers. All of them left exactly as they were. A sort of tradition. That's right. That's why the rich have such big houses, Mr. McNair. To so many generations, you need something the size of Buckingham Palace just to accommodate the memories. <laughs> hmm. Yes, of course. Otherwise, they just get by with a bungalow. And this one? That's mine. Ah, mm. Home of the doll's house. 
Yes. As I said, I'd like to see it. You don't have to be polite, Mr. McNair. Not now. You misunderstand me. I meant it. You made this? Yes. The furniture? Mm. That's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. You're a very talented young woman. What do you make of my garbage, Mr. McNair? Well, it uh, certainly is an interesting work. You mean peculiar? A little bit odd? I think you've got the makings of an artist. You're being polite again. Ah, paint too. Just a bit. Grandmother always said I inherited it from my father. And I think she approved. Cigarette? My mother doesn't allow it. You always do what your mother says? Mostly. Aren't children supposed to? Up to a point. Why are you here, Mr. McNair? Family matters. Your mother thought it was time to put some things in order, that's all. People think I'm stupid, Mr. McNair. Just because uh, I'm awkward and I get nervous. And there are a lot of things I don't know, but, but I do know one thing. People don't always say what they mean. What about you, Mr. McNair? Why are you really here? Well, you put me in a difficult position. Your mother's asked me to keep her confidence. You know, I don't want to lie to you. She's dying, isn't she? That's why you're here. What makes you think that? She makes some excuse. She, she goes to Sydney. She sees a doctor, not just any doctor, a specialist. I know this because I found the card. And then you show up. I know my mother, Mr. McNair. Is that what's happening? Yes, your mother's dying. She has cancer. Much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust.
This is Cameron. Yes, miss. I was looking for a picture of my father. I beg your pardon, miss. <clears throat> a picture of my father. We don't have any, not here. When your father died, your mother removed them all because she yes, couldn't... Yes, I know that. That's part of Guardbridge history, the authorised version. What about the unauthorised version, the truth? Who was Graham Greene? He's an author, isn't he, miss? Of course. How stupid of me. Famous author comes to Garbridge, gives my mother silk lingerie, and nobody thinks any the more of it. Who was Graham Greene, Mrs Cameron? You know, don't you? I only know what your mother told me. And what was that? That she loved your father and she lost him. But he never died. He did. For her. I couldn't cry at the funeral, it wasn't in me. But I cried when I read that. Such a waste. One day she's in love and then nothing. She never writes another word. It, it's almost as if she died back then. So who was he, Mr. McNair? Who was Graham Greene? Well, as it says, he worked here. According to the gossip, he courted your mother. And then? Oh, there's a scandal. Something about the war. He ain't been court martialed, I think. Anyway, he was less than he appeared. A bit of a con man, I suppose. I had to let him go. And that was that. Nobody heard any more. At least not your mother. Was he my father? In a court, probably not. In this room? Who else was there? So that's it. Katrina Green. Well, not exactly. Green wasn't his real name. What, what do you mean? What was it? Oh, I wish I could remember. His father was a knight or a soldier or something. Hold on. Yes, it's Howell here. Oh, Miss Howell, I want you to go down to archives. Yes. You're looking for the employment records of about 20 years ago. The one I want is Green. Mr. Graham Green. Like the author? That's right, Miss Howell, just like the author. Suppose you find him. I take it as your plan. What then? I don't know. Well, I don't mean to be unkind, but he may not enjoy being found. He could look at you and say, so what? Yes, I know. He, he could. Assuming, of course, he's still alive. That's occurred to me too, but what else can I do? I mean, at the moment, I... I'm sort of lost. I think I've told you this once before. You're a very talented young woman. Thanks. Is that the one, yes, Mr. McNair? Uh, yes, that's it. Yes. Nothing. Stanton. His father was a general, the Lion of Dunkirk. <laughs> ah, Stanton. Three sons, Edward deceased, James and Harold. Well, for sure. 80 Essex Square, Belgravia. Well, there it is. Or well, the family, at least. I'm sure they can tell you, is he still alive? Maybe even where he is. That's if you're sure you really want to know. What would you do? 
Well, if I was young again, and I had the whole of my life ahead of me, and I was quite wealthy, I'd go to London tomorrow. And if it didn't work out, I wouldn't give a damn. I'd go to the Victoria and Albert Museum, and I'd look into dolls' houses. Thank you. Good luck. Good morning. Stanton Residence. Mr. James Stanton, please. Whom shall I say is calling? He doesn't know me. My name is Katrina. I'm his niece. I'm sorry. You have a wrong number. Mr. Stanton does not have a niece. Mr. James Stanton has a brother, Harold Stanton. Yes. Harold Stanton is my father. H hold the line, madam. Miss Stanton, is it? Yes. I think perhaps we should meet. You have the address? Yes, I do. Shall we say at four, then? At four. Everything seems to indicate he's my father. It looks that way, doesn't it? You say they're never married? No. Seems nobody much marries anymore. I have a daughter of my own. She lives with a chap. I don't like it, but what can you do? Nothing, I suppose. So where? Where is he, Mr. Stanton? We grew up together, Helen and I, in this house. He was my elder brother. I loved him dearly. 
But if he were to knock on that door now, I'd turn him away without a moment's pause. That's not idle talk. Many years ago, I did just that. I don't know what happened then, but as you say, it was many years ago. Some things never fade. He broke the old man's heart. Our father was a soldier. But more than that, he believed the rank brought with it not only privilege, but responsibility. In his eyes, hell was a coward. And in yours? In mine, long ago, he ceased to be a member of this family. That is why I could turn him away as you would a stranger. I don't understand all that. All I know is I want to meet him. Which one is he? Which one's my father? He's gone, young lady. Hell Stanton no longer exists. No one by that name ever lived in this house. I've come all this way and you're not going to tell me where he is? If you'll excuse me, there's nothing to be gained by this. I'll have Fleming show you out. You've been with the family a long time? Uh, yes. You knew my father? I knew Mr. Hal. I came to see Mr. Stanton because I needed some help. I know what you want, miss. Where is he, Mr. Fleming? I don't know. And if I did, I couldn't tell you. This house has been my home. I understand, but I do think I have some right to know... Whatever you may think, miss, no one will thank you for dragging this up. Not me, not Mr. James. Least of all the man you claim is your father. I didn't come here to drag anything up. I came here because it's the only place I could start, that's all. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he told you it's none of your business, didn't he? Yes. So, there's an end of it. I'll leave you my address in Australia. You never know, something might turn up. Or better still, somebody might change their mind. When do you leave, miss? As soon as possible. I've only got one more thing I have to do. And what is that? See a doll's house. Good afternoon, how can I help? I'd like to change my booking, please. To when? Tomorrow, if possible. More at Easter, I'm afraid. The flights are all full. The next time I can do is the 29th of March. Eight days? Okay. I've changed your booking to the 29th and waitlisted you for anything earlier. Please keep checking. You might be lucky. I think maybe she is. I'm cancelling London to Sydney two days' time. I couldn't help overhearing. I hope you don't mind. Their own economy. It's okay? No, I don't mind. I wonder if between us we can help this young lady. We don't usually operate that way. But there is a system, and the cancellations usually go to people on the top of the list. Systems. The trouble with systems is they're so unyielding. I bet this one doesn't even know it's Easter. Come on, Gail. Make her holiday. If you promise not to tell a soul, it's my job. Oh. I'm Arky. Arky Regan. Katrina Stanton. <clears throat> Katrina? <clears throat> it's nice. So where are you staying? The Haygate. I know it. I had a drink there once. I'm still paying it off. I want you? You don't have to do this. You've done enough. It's no trouble. I like to, really. You seem very quiet. It's just me, I think. Nothing wrong? No. 
I'm just not very good at this. Um, um, I'm not used to it. It's OK. Excuse me. I get asthma. Silly. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's embarrassing. No. Don't say that. And don't even think it. I know it's hard, I know it's frightening, but you mustn't let guilt come into it. You don't have to get embarrassed for my sake. Look, see that? Needle marks. Diabetes, twice a day. I'm damned if I'm gonna let it embarrass me. So let's have no more excuses, okay? Okay? Okay. So how long you been here? Two days. You're leaving already. You must really like it. How about you? Oh, I live here now. I came on a job about five years ago. I'm a news photographer. I usually travel the world taking those pictures that manage to spoil your breakfast. Anyway, I liked it here. It's a lot more civilized than New York. Who do you work for? I was bitter. Freelance. So why were you going to Australia? Kakadu, the Kimberleys, the Rock. And then Jane, the girl I was going with, broke her leg. I don't know anyone in Australia. Don't want to spend four weeks alone. So at least here we can limp around together. You must look aside. So, how did you hurt your leg? Car accident or what? Oh, Jane's was. She did hers in Hammersmith. I got mine in Afghanistan. Well, anyway, thank you. As I said, no trouble. No, not just for the ticket. For the walk. And for talking sense about this. Look, if you ever do make it to Australia, I live a long way out, but it's a big house. Guardbridge. Yeah. Thanks. Goodbye. I'm in a phone box around the corner on Fleet. Listen, uh, I was just wondering if maybe you'd like to go for a drink. A drink? Yeah, you know, a drink. OK, sure, that'd be nice. Great. Uh, downstairs? Yeah, I I'll see you in a minute. OK. Bye. What brought you to London? Family things. I was looking for a relative. Thanks. No luck, huh? No, not really. I don't think you wanted to be found. Well, are you sure you looked hard enough? I don't think anyone just disappears. Was it a close relative? I never knew him. What did you know about him that was certain? His name? I know what it was. I'm not sure now. Job? He was a lawyer and a soldier. OK, which army? British. And that's where you start. Everybody leaves clues. So you want to try it? Want to give this theory a shot? I'd love to. But are you sure you've got the time? Yeah, i got time. First thing tomorrow morning. OK. Admiral Stanton, Captain. Born Essex Square, commissioned April the 12th, 1939. Another pip in uh, November. Is this the one? What else? Court martial, August 14, 1946. Dishonorable discharge. That's about it. A couple of lines and a card. Hardly does it justice, does it? Does what justice? It was a big thing back then. 
They were in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Eight chaps had spent a year planning an escape. The night they were going, he informed on them. The Japs beheaded the lot. He must have wished the war would never end. And what happened then, after the court-martial? Nothing here. A lot of fellows wanted him shot, I remember that. But I suppose strings were pulled. You know how it is. They always stick together. It was in all the newspapers. August the 14th, 1946. He was my father. I guess it'll be a while then. Yeah. Okay. I'll call you later. I've read all about it. My father grew up in Bangkok, and then he went back there as a soldier. He's living there now, isn't he? That's a pretty long bow to draw. I'm asking you a question, that's all. Is he in Bangkok? You've done the reading. You seem to know everything. Not everything. I do know that he is not as guilty as you believe. He never denied telling the Japanese. I know what happened in the court. I've studied the case. I know the defense backwards. If the Japanese hadn't been told, there would have been reprisals. Dozens of his men might have been killed. Exactly. Everyone said so. No, not everyone. Especially not the court. They rejected that defense. The rules of engagement make it clear. A soldier's duty is to escape. Eight men died trying to do their duty, thanks to him. He is still your brother. You can say anything you like, you can't change that. I've told you before, Hal Stanton no longer exists. Every time I mention his name, you get upset. Why, Mr. Stanton? Just tell me that. Why? Come up. Come in. Thank you. Oh, no, this won't take a minute. Miss Stanton, uh, Katrina, I've just come to tell you that you were right. M. Bangkok is a firm of solicitors. The family have dealt with them for years, ever since grandfather was ambassador there. Every month, they forward an allowance to my brother. Exactly where he is, I have no idea. He may not even be in Thailand. But they are the people who can contact him. If he wants to see you, well, that's up to him. I can't do much more than that. Thank you. Uh, there's just one more thing. If you should ever see him, would you tell him? Uh, tell him that his brother says hello. You were right. I, I do think of him often. But just tell him that, will you? Well, are you leaving us already? No, I'm just trying on a few things. I'm being taken out for dinner tonight. Oh, you've met a young chap. Hmm. Well, good for you. 
don't know all that much about clothes. Oh, my daughter knows about that. I'll get her to call you. No, it's not important. Nonsense. She's your cousin. I'm sure she won't mind. Her name is Sarah. Well, at least to me. Down in Bond Street, she's known as Imelda. She was born to shop. It's such a shame you're not going to be here for the weekend. Oh, I'd have loved you to come down to Hampshire with all of us. Mm. Clive's house is gorgeous. Actually, he's gorgeous, too. And Jeremy and Tara are brilliant. You'd love Jeremy. He's absolutely obsessed about the outback. He'd talk horses and sheep and cows with you all afternoon. So tomorrow you leave? Straight through, or will you stop in Bangkok? I'd like to, but they say that all the flights from Bangkok to Sydney are full. So, I guess I'll just go home. Write to the lawyers from there. You stir at the guard bridge? That's very good. You remember. I won't forget. You could stay, you know. For a while, maybe. I don't know. Or I could go with you. To Australia? Yeah, I mean, I still want to see the place. I still want to photograph it. But... What would Jane say about that? Jane's a friend of mine. We work together sometimes. She writes the articles, I take the pictures. It's a professional relationship. Flights, though, they're, they're all full. To Australia and America, maybe. But I bet we can get to India. Then what? Pick up a connecting flight from Bombay. Could we do that? Sure, it might take a couple of days, but we could have Easter there. You have to see Goa. It's on the Arabian Sea, south of Bombay. I've never seen the falls in Iguazu, so I can't say for sure, but Goa may just be about the most beautiful place on Earth. It's where... Portugal meets India. All the world falls in love. Aki? Yo! It's open. Hi. Hi. You ready? Yep. Got everything? You checked? I think so. Uh, there's something I have to say to you. What? Please don't get upset. No, just tell me. Oh, God. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. Merry Christmas. What? Will you please just take a look at this thing before I make a total, complete, utter fool of myself. Yeah. Okay. Good. interested in photography, so I thought you might like this for the trip. You shouldn't have spent this. Yeah, well, I thought if you wanted, uh, maybe I could teach you if that was okay. And I mean, I'd like to. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you.
want to get it all in, you're going to have to use this. Hold it. Wow. You should be learning how to do this. I know. Happy? Yep. Ah, Mr. Rogers, welcome. Almost. Regan, aren't you Regan? Oh, yes, of course, Regan. Forgive me. Okay, what have you got for me, Mirna? Oh, you're lucky. You've just the one room left. Only one. Damn, we needed two. You want to try somewhere else? It's the best. Magnificent view of the beach. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's fine, thanks. We'll take it from here. Have you been here a lot? Yeah, a few times. Have you been here with other girls? Sometimes. Jealous? Yeah. Good. So what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, we could go down the beach, take our first swim together. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could go for a walk. Sounds good. Yeah, so maybe we could go up to the old fort. You know, it's only four miles uphill. 90 degree heat. Fast asleep. You should have woken me. You'd have hated it. It's a hell of a climb in the dark. I'll take you up later if you like. So how was it? Well, good for me. I like to dawn light, so I take shots of sunrise wherever I go. One day I'll publish it, dawn across the world. That'll never work. Gotcha. <laughs> Want to head back up to the hotel?
You want this left out or not? Um, no, leave it in. Okay. What about via Bangkok? Can we go that way? I thought you said you were going to write. Yeah, but Easter's almost over. We might get seats now. Yes, Bombay to Bangkok is possible. We don't want seats to Bangkok. Why not? If we can go that way, it's no trouble, is it? But I hate Bangkok. Look, it'll be the middle of summer. The place has got the worst traffic in the world, air pollution like you wouldn't believe. You got asthma, cat. It is not designed for easy breathing. It'll only be a day or two. I don't mind taking a risk. Is this better? Air India to Bangkok on Wednesday? Yes. Then a Qantas flight the following day. Oh, great. OK. <laughs> OK, we booked the baggage straight through. We might as well avoid some of the hassle if we're only going to be there for one day. Sorry, change of airline. Afternoon, Carlisle and Carlisle. Hello, my name's Katrina Stanton. Could I speak to Mr. Carlisle, please? Could you hold on a moment, please? Richard Carlisle. Hello, um, I'm ringing about a client of yours, Mr. Hal Stanton. Well, I'm not sure I can help you. What is it you want? Uh, his brother gave me your number. He said you act as his banker. And who exactly am I talking to? My name's Katrina Stanton. Um, Hal Stanton is my father. Um, I'd rather not discuss this on the phone. Do you have my address? Yes, I do. We should be free in an hour if you'd like to come around there. OK. Goodbye. My Alcubjai. My instructions are clear. They haven't changed in 20 years. I can't give out any information without the express permission of my client. Yes, I know. But you can tell me if he's in Thailand. No, I can't tell you anything. All I can do is to let him know that you called and want to see him. Beyond that, it's up to him. But I told you I'm only here for a day. Well, I can get a quick answer. So we must be close? Not necessarily. Hello, Bob. You haven't seen Bill Worthington, have you? Saw him last in the uh, reading room. Always reading, that fellow. Best read man I've ever known.
that up? Much, thank you. It's the heat, you know. It's not, it's the booze. Yes, you're probably right. This is important, isn't it? And I can tell. Yes. The charm's just dripping off you. They've stopped the money, have they? No, the breweries are safe. Oh, they will be pleased. I had a visit today from a girl in Australia. She's quite attractive. How nice for you. She said she was your daughter. Go on. She's using your name, I mean, your real name. The mother was... Faulkner, I think. Yes, Catherine Faulkner. They live at a station, whatever that is. Railway station, I suppose. Called Guard Bridge. Was it true? I don't know, possibly. How old is she? 21 next month. The age is right. How could I tell? I mean, Premier Fastly, yes, it's possibly true. What's her name? Trina. Bloody awful name. So what do you want me to do? Do I have a legal obligation? I expect you know more about Australian law than I do. Did she say what she wanted? Just to meet you. You're right, of course. The heat has nothing whatever to do with it. The only drinking problem I have is that I can't get enough of it. They call it an unqualified success. My life, I mean. How? What do I do? You say no, say it's not true. You tell her her mother and I were just acquaintances. Well, you know the sort of thing, Richard. You know what to say. You want me to lie? Yes, I want you to lie. I want you to earn your money for once. I want you to act like my lawyer, not my bloody judge. Tell him that I'm only going to be here for a day. I'm sorry, my client gave me strict instructions. I can't enter into any debate about this. Well, why didn't you tell him that? Stanton, I'm very sorry. That simply has to be the end of the matter. Goodbye. <sighs> Idiot. Who, the lawyer or your father? I mean, I don't think I'm asking too much, do you? All I want to do is meet him. Come on, put yourself in his shoes. He hears nothing for 20 years, and then someone rings him up in Bangkok and claims to be his daughter. Wouldn't you be a little suspicious? Mm. I should write to him. No, don't rush it. Wait till you're in Australia. Then you can write the whole thing out. Extracts from the diaries, photocopies, pictures. Make it a real dossier. Yeah, you're right. We should never have come here. Forget it. We'll be on a plane in a couple of hours. No more hassles. We'll be home free. Your luggage? Uh huh. Could you please step over to X ray machine? Okay. I'll meet you over at the counter. No, both of you, please. Thank you. Uh, that's the lady's camera bag. It's got filter. X ray won't hurt it. I know, but I've heard that before. Would you mind opening it for the gentleman here? Sure. So the camera here has got fast film in it.
Thank you. Yeah, you try there, and I'll go over to this one. Uh -huh. Hi. Thank you. Are you carrying any gift or parcel on behalf of another person? No. Did you pack your bags yourself? Yes. Have you at any time left your luggage unattended? No. Smoking or non-smoking? Um, I'm with him, so if I could have two seats together in non-smoking, that'd be great. Yes. 19A and 19B. Thank you. Thank you. She's given us 19A and 19B in non-smoking. Can you go down to immigration and join the next queue, and we'll see you down there in a minute. Gate 9. Gate 9. Morning. Good morning. So you've got 19B on smoking? Uh, no, if it's okay, can I get a seat in smoking on the aisle? Um, aren't you two traveling together? No, we just met. Are you carrying any parcel or gifts on behalf of another person? No, I am not. Did you pack your bags yourself? Yes, I did. Have you any time leave your luggage unattended? No, I have not. Excuse me, Mr. Stanton. I'm with the customs police. Can you come with me, please? Ready? Please, come. Oh, just hang around. What's the problem? You must come. Don't worry. Aki? Aki! Here, let me take that. What is it? I'm sorry. You're going to buy Mr. Stanton. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Oh, what's wrong? I have a friend, he's waiting out there. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Maisie wants to know, is this your bag? Yes. Yes, it's her bag. Who are you? I'm a friend. Are, are you with the customs? No, I'm with the Australian Federal Police, attached to the Thai government, Narcotics Bureau. Narcotics? That's right, narcotics. Oh. Lumley. OK, let's get on with it. Open your bag, please. I'm meant to be meeting someone. I've got a plane yes. to catch. You won't be meeting anybody. The only people you'll be meeting are this gentleman and myself. Now, open the bag. Okay. You all right? I'm going to Combination. You get that when I get the combination to the bag. <clears throat> combination. Uh, it's four, seven, two. Four, seven, two. Four, seven, two. Is that your camera? <coughs> Len. Yes. Is that your lens? Film, <laughs> Are they your films? Yes. Are they your films? Yes. <coughs> Aki. Aki. Merry Christmas. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
ตรีอุดมสุวรรณสาระขอแจ้งข้อกล่าวให้ท่านไม่น่าแสนตันว่าคุณได้มีร่างครอบครองเดียวไว้เกินกว่า140กรัมเพราะว่าคุณได้ยินสัญญาณว่าคุณต้องรับการรักษาWhat he's saying is, for your own benefit, it is best that you cooperate fully. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Okay. Two point four kilos of heroin, little girl. She's in the big time, doesn't it? Now this man wants to know, and I want to know. Who is your supplier? Supplier? I don't know. She doesn't know. I tell her two times a day. I'm sitting here alone. What he's saying is he sits here two or three times a week with people who spend not less than 100,000 US dollars, and they never remember who they paid it to. Don't you find that remarkable? Now I can tell you something. He is getting pissed off, and I am getting extremely agitated. I was with a man. Name? Aki Wagan. Write it down. He was a photographer. He was the one who gave me the case. We were travelling together. No, it's not true. Take it out. It is true. He doesn't believe you. And neither do I. The story is that old. Not even the ties are asking questions about it. Like, is that your ladies? Did you package yourself? Are you carrying it for someone else? Give me a break. You answered those questions, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. So let's start again. Ask her, see what. Her, see what. 
was asking you, where did you buy the drugs? I told you I was given the case. Now, I'm not saying anything else until I have somebody here. This is in Australia. They can hold you here for seven days without seeing or talking to anybody. I want somebody from the embassy, please. They're all on the golf course. Who are you going to deal with today is this man and me. Now, he has two choices. Number one, he can charge you under Section 66 for possession. And for this amount, it's a life sentence. All right? Or he can charge you under Section 65 for trafficking. And that's a mandatory death sentence. There's no leniency. There is no remissions. There is just death. And in Thailand, death is by machine gun. I'm trying to help you, little girl. We want some information. We want you to plead guilty. And in return, we'll only charge you for possession. Now, it's in your hands, not in ours. That's it. No, I'm not going to plead guilty. Well, if you think some fancy pants lawyer is going to come up here and razzle and dazzle his way with words around the courtroom, then you're wrong. There's no jury. Just three judges sitting alone. What sort of country is this? You don't have a jury? What you're saying is it's their country. It's their rules. I didn't ask you to come. I have a saying, wherever Westerners go, degradation and depravity follows. And in three and a half years that I've been here, to my utter shame, I agree with them. Now, plead guilty. No! Then you are a bloody fool! Wrap it up, doctor. This is a record of interview. Sign it. I don't statement. understand it. If it was in Australia, would it be written in Thai? Sign it, you bloody idiot. No. What's happening? They're going to search you. I've already been searched. Not completely. Hello.
Wash? Fine. Inside. Australian policeman spoke to you? Yes. Did he tell you what happened? He said you'd been arrested, yeah. Did he tell you about the bag? It was a present. It was given to me by a man called... Miss Stanton, Ar I'm sorry. This isn't really my area. What do you mean, your area? Shall we sit down? Yeah. We handle mainly commercial work. It's a family practice. Over the years, we've built our reputation on contracting, mainly between the Thai government and foreign companies. But you know Thai law. Yes, of course. And you understand the, the system? Pretty well. So what's the problem, Mr. Carlyle? I've told you. No, you haven't. You've given me an excuse, that's all. Is it because it's drugs? You don't want your firm mixed up in it, is that it? Partly. We've been approached a number of times over the years, and we've always steered clear of drug cases. Even if the person's innocent? But the other thing is, it doesn't help anybody, not your case, nor my firm to have a white lawyer defend a white client. Mr. Carlyle, this is probably worse than you realize. To them, it was my bag. I was carrying it. I'm going to sound like every other drug trafficker when I try to blame someone else. I need help, Mr. Carlyle. I need the best help I can get. I'm going to refer you to several lawyers, specialists in criminal law. You mean ties? Yes, top people in their field. No, no ties. Well, that's ridiculous. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I need someone who understands me, who believes in me, who'll fight for me. Well, to fight for your client, that's a lawyer's job, any lawyer. I'll have this list drawn up. My uncle said that Stanton's had dealt with your firm for years. Yes? If this was any other member of the family, someone more legitimate than me, then you wouldn't hesitate, would you? You'd take it on, wouldn't you? I'll ask you one thing. Are you guilty? I swear to you, I'm innocent. I didn't know anything about that bag. I trusted him. It would be a fairly thankless task. In the end, I suspect, probably an unsuccessful one. How long do you need to think it over? I'll let you know as soon as we can. Okay. Will you do one thing for me? What's that? Can you get access to my luggage? 
If I said I was your lawyer and it was just your personal things, yes, I think so. Why? I want to see my father. I've already told you. I know you don't want to discuss it with him again. But in my luggage, there's a diary. If you give it to him, maybe it will convince him. I can't see a diary doing much good. It belonged to my mother. Will you do that, please? Yes, all right. If I can. And tell him. Tell him he's all I've got now. I can't quite picture you singing some enchanted evening. Well, once upon a time, a very silly man met a very fine woman, and it seems he broke her, broke her apart. And in the end, neither of them lived happily ever after. I'm sorry. What are we going to do? Well, they want a guilty plea for possession. If not, they'll charge her with trafficking, for which the death sentence is mandatory. Is she guilty? No, of course not. She's about as guilty as you or I. I should see her, shouldn't I? Why? Well, because she's my daughter, that's why. You didn't think that the other day? I hadn't read that the other day. You think it's wise? Oh, I shouldn't think so. But if we were wise, we wouldn't keep going, would we? No, I didn't mean wise for you, I meant for her. I think she's pinning a lot of her hopes on you. And seeing me would disappoint her, is that it? Was that really necessary, Richard? I'm just being honest, that's all. You know, sometimes honesty can be used as an excuse for the most dreadful cruelty. I'd try and remember that if I were you. All I'm trying to do is protect her. The function, perhaps, better fulfilled by a father. There you go again, sitting in judgment. But uh, point taken, Your Honor, point taken. So you won't go? Oh, I'll go. I just won't tell her I'm her father, that's all. I'll say I'm her... a lawyer. I'll say I was sent by my partner, Richard Carlyle. I've already told her we don't handle criminal work. I'll tell her we're reconsidering. You wouldn't happen to have a briefcase I could borrow, would you? No, I wouldn't. Worthington, a Bill Worthington. Where's Mr. Carlyle? Well, it was Richard's idea that I should come here. He wanted me to meet you. I thought I made it clear to him. I don't want any other lawyer. Oh, no, no, you, you don't understand. I'm, I'm here on his behalf. I'm sorry. I realize. So, do you, do you work for Mr. Carlyle? Um, no, not that either, really. No, not exactly. No, you couldn't really say that I... I work for him. I'm more like a partner, really. Well, how can I help you, Mr Worthington? Well, I brought you some things. Um, tea. English breakfast. I can't stand that Chinese stuff. <laughs> Vitamin pills. Super little cup. I don't know what, about what that's like. The, the lady said it was good. Powdered milk. Uh, fruit. Fruit. Uh, oh, yes, and a fruit cake. It's from Fort Newman Masons. I always get them to send one out every year. And the post is always late, unfortunately. That's very kind of you, but I don't think they're going to let me have this stuff. Oh, well, that's all right. That, that's already been settled. Will Mr. Carlyle take the case? He's considering it. Why? What's the problem? Well, he's a very cautious man, a very competitive man, and he... Um, he doesn't like to lose. Oh, I 
It's encouraging. Nor do I, especially not if it's my life at stake. Which rather brings me to my cue, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Carlyle wants to know if you're still determined to plead not guilty. Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? Well, you see, and if you insist on pleading not guilty, they'll charge you with trafficking, and that carries the death penalty. But on the other hand, if you, if you plead guilty, it gives the judge an excuse for clemency. I mean, it's just a way of saving their face and, 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 and your life. I don't understand, Mr. Worthington. I mean, I always thought the truth was sacred. I didn't realize it was a commodity, something that could be traded back and forth just to suit the stupidity of the law. I'm just asking a question, that's all. And the answer is, I'm innocent. Now, you can tell Mr. Carlyle that I intend to plead not guilty, whether it's the death penalty or not. Yes, I I will. I will. Is there anything else? Um, no. Then let me ask you something. Do you have a drinking problem? Are you always so blunt? Only when my life's in other people's hands. Well, I did have a a drink earlier on, yes, but certainly not a problem. It's just the heat, that's all. I hope so, Mr. Worthington. Yes, well... I'm going to recommend that we take the case. There won't be any argument. You'll enter a plea of not guilty. Will he agree? Oh, I expect so. If not, I'll remind him that the truth isn't... uh, can't be treated like a commodity. That's the expression, isn't it? Thank you. And for the food and things. Do you know if my father's been contacted? I asked Mr. Carlyle to give him a diary. I'll find out. At 9.30, there's that meeting on the Circumvent Road project, so if you could have those amended contracts on my desk first thing in the morning. She's innocent, Richard. Yes, I told you that. Yeah, but you never told me she was young and clever and straight as a die. God, she reminded me of my father. Uncompromising, blunt to the point of rudeness. She never gave quarter, Richard. She certainly never expected any. Look, you've got to take this on. Oh, is that what you think I've got to? Well, don't you think so? Why don't you go home? I'll give you a ring. Yes, sir. So adieu, Carl. So adieu. It's taken four generations, but my family's built something here. If I go in there and defend some white girl, then this firm starts to look like all the other colonials. White lawyers for white clients. And pretty soon the Thais are going to think we're no better than those fools down at the club. Oh, I don't think they're going... If that's not bad enough, what's this case all about? Drugs and greed, nothing more. And who are the people this firm deals with every day? I mean, they're Buddhists, for Christ's sake. I can't help but ask myself, Hal, where's the profit in this? She's innocent. To some men, proving that would be profit enough. No, to some men, but not to me, is that it? Well, that's where you're wrong, Hal, because I'll tell you what else I've been thinking. Above all, I'm a lawyer. And if I don't use the law now to defend an innocent person, then it doesn't mean anything, does it? So I think we'd better do it. We'd better defend her and damn the consequences. And if we are going to do it, you'd better put yourself together. I think you should get down on your knees and thank her for giving a bastard like you a second chance. Most of the time, you know, you're a complete prick. Then you say something like that and I could hug you for it. Yes, well, not just yet, Hal. Give me a hug when we've won. I will. Believe me, I will. 
this isn't a trial, it's just a hearing. You're going to be formally charged, that's all. What, with? Well, I don't know until we get in there. In either case, we'll plead not guilty. <laughs> now, everything will be in time, so don't panic if you don't follow what's going on. Who's she? Now, this is not, she's a Thai barrister. Does she work for them? No, no, we hired her. She's our interpreter. She works for us. I'll plead on your behalf. Because it's a capital offence, the judge will order that you be held in prison. Are they back there? No, they're just holding cells. In a proper prison, they clung toy or yard la or even long jiao. Long jiao, that's the worst, isn't it? Yes, that's the worst. And once we're inside the court, it's important not to offend the judges, so I defer to them. They're your superiors. Don't stare old points, and if you're asked to speak, try not to raise your voice. Oh, and um, whatever you do, don't cross your ankles. Why? Your feet are dirty. To show the sole of your foot is considered an insult. Stay calm. Katrina Stanton. ตั้งข้อหาเป็นทางการภายใต้มาตราหกห้าว่าข้อพ้องให้เราเยียดไว้สุดจำนวนสี่จุดสองกิโลกรัมเพื่อเจตนาตำหนักนะที่เราพูด
ไว้ไม่ได้เข้าไปฮะเฮ้ยเข้าไปไม่ได้เร็วเร็วฟาวังสินเฮียนดรอปเอดิสสเมลไลค์ชิทยูคอลแบงคอกฮิลตันไอคอลฟาวังเฮเวนเฮนมินเฮ Yes, child. This is a new and wonderful day for me. There will never be another day like this one. I'm divinely guided all day long, and whatever I do will prosper. My name's Stanton. Cat Stanton. Shit for you. Don't worry about her. She always gets like that when I've been talking to the golden-bellied fat man. Hi, I'm Astra. Surrounds me and folds me and wraps me, and I go forth in peace. Never my attention wanders away from that which is good and constructive. I will immediately bring it back to contemplate that which is lovely and of good report. I am a spiritual and mental magnet. I think of myself all things at once possibly. Success in all my undertakings today. I am definitely going to be happy all day long. Um. Are you the courier they got with the two kilos? I'm not a courier. I was set up. See the zoo out there? Um, yeah. Bloody miracle, isn't it? What? So many innocent people in one place. Um, As if you believe them, of course. What are you in here for? Same as you. Except I admit it. Guess what I was carrying when they got me? Seven kilos. My idiot lawyer says I should claim it was for my own use. I could have fitted up a friggin' army. I was gonna have money, lady. Just gonna get myself straight. Gonna buy a house and beautiful clothes. It's gonna take me brother on one of them cruise liners. Never gonna be treated like shit by anybody ever again. Is that I'm in here for? Just wondering what every other bastard has. <sighs> Lock up time. Hey, listen, Kat, you got twenty bucks? U.S. Not an Australian ship. Why? Well, one night when it's safe, it shows you. Don't they lock us up? Of course they do. Boy, paying twenty bucks. สวัสดีครับคุณนาตีเซนกับผมครับสารวัต
I haven't come to argue to the case, Mr. Annan. I'm perfectly capable of doing that in court. I'm here because I object to the charge. And there's no justification for a charge of trafficking. I mean, the prosecution should deal with this under Section 66, possession. That clause, Section 65, is aimed at heroin producers and drug cartels. And that's why the death sentence is mandatory. I mean, the legislature never intended it to be used against a, a young woman who gets tricked into carrying a bag through customs. ขอบคุณมากสําหรับเลคเชอร์คุณคลายไม่บ่อยนักนะที่เราเจอชาวต่างประเทศที่กล้าวิจารณ์กฎหมายไทยคุณไม่ได้จะพูดความยุติธรร
you know the basis for that rather bold prediction? No. He said a dog always returns to its vomit. That's what he said. You know, when war broke out, I was a military aide of the embassy here. Somebody in the family was ambassador, wasn't he? My grandfather, some years before, well, as you can guess, it certainly didn't hurt. Well, I mean, I wasn't cut out to be a soldier. I wasn't cut out to be a prisoner, for that matter, either. But that's life, as I say. In 1945, there was a lot of illness in the prison. Typhoid, cholera, malnutrition. Eight of the men decided to try to escape. Now, the Japanese had made it very clear from the start that if anyone escaped, two would be killed. So I told them they couldn't go. And they said they were only doing their duty. I ordered them not to. They defied me. So, rightly or wrongly, I was left with no choice but to go to the Japanese. They were arrested and executed the same day. There's one thing I'll never forget. How young they were. I'm very young. Me too, I suppose. We were all so young. I can't go back inside there, Richard. I really can't. Well, we have a problem then. I can still help. Sorry, Hal. I don't think you're really committed, and I don't need a passenger. Well, of course I'm committed. She's my daughter. Well, then go back there, Hal. You should go back there tomorrow morning. It's up to you.